Hi there and welcome to this tutorial. This video is part of a series, so in case you missed the previous videos, make sure you click here so that you can start with the first one. Otherwise, just continue. Let's now move towards a post request. And in this post request, I'm still using httpbin.org and using the post endpoint. And while using this post endpoint, I have the possibility of going to the body of the request, selecting raw, and just pushing some data to this endpoint. So I'm pushing here a JavaScript object and I'm getting here a response from that and I still get the information that I posted. Now, it would be quite interesting to have a look at another thing. So right now we learned a bit how to deal with data. And let's have a look at another thing. And we are going to introduce here a bit something more dynamic. So let's imagine that I have this pre-request script. And let me define here something totally new. For example, like let date new date now. So this will just give me the current date. So let me show you how it looks like. There's actually no new date, it's just date now. Sorry about that. And this is what we get. This is how the current date looks like. It's absolutely not important. But this is sort of a randomly generated value. So every time I submit this request, and this data will change. And let's see now how we can actually post that. So this pre-request script allows us to write some JavaScript code before the request gets actually executed. And again, we're gonna switch to our friend here. And by using the snippets, we're gonna set here a global variable. Now these variables are a way to pass data between the pre-request and the tests and between the request and between multiple requests and stuff like that. And let's say here, we are gonna set a variable, a global variable called, called current date. And we can either put date now right here inside, or we can use this date object that we just created and put that inside there. And now when I'll submit this current date, will be available as a global object. You can actually easily inspect that here. You'll see here current date and this is the value. So let's try to see how we can get this here. So I'm gonna copy the name and go back to my body. And let's say here current date. And the way that we do it is to write double curly brackets. And when we do that, we have the possibility of using environment variables. This double curly brackets can be used in the body, can be used as a parameter, can be used anywhere where your interactions looks now when I'm submitting this. And now we'll have this current date, which is this value here and current date, which is this value here. So let's now write a test for that. And again, quickly parsing the response to get that information. And where are we? We have the JSON data object and we have that. And on the first level is this JSON object connecting with a dot and we have the current date. And that looks good. Perfect. And to equal, let's put in this value. Now, when I'm submitting this, hmm, 
you will see here that we have di two different values. So this is something that's changing all the time. This is something that we actually generate in advance. And we cannot just say here that this is the value that we, we cannot hard code here a value. So we need a way to grab that information. Now, I said that we cannot use the curly brackets to get that. So, whoops, sorry about that. Too many curly brackets. Okay, this will not work. This is, this makes no sense. This is not valid JavaScript. And the way we get a global variable that we just set is by looking here again at the snippets. And one of the snippets is not get a global variable, uh, sorry, not set the global variable, but get a global variable. So when I'm gonna click that, this piece of code will be generated. And every time you're not sure what something is doing, just use console log and you will get more information. But I know exactly how this works. So basically, we're gonna expect that something we get from the response body equals a global variable that we have previously set. And this will work. Now, I know this is a bit more advanced, but I wanted to show you anyway. Um, you can download the Postman Quick Reference and there you will find more examples and a complete cheat sheet on different kind of methods you can use inside Postman. So make sure you totally download that because you will need it and print it out so that you can have it on hand when writing Postman tests. So the first step now, we step up the level again. So we are dealing here with dynamic variables. This is not static anymore. It's changing with every request. And now we have a way on how to deal with such kind of things. So again, just to recap, we are just generating in a pre-request script. Still, this is JavaScript code. We're generating here something dynamically, setting a global variable and using that global variable inside the request body. Now this is called pre-request script because it happens before the request is executed. So setting this global variable in the test, it will make no sense because the tests are executed after the request has been sent and the pre-request script is executed before the request has been sent. So we're setting it here, using it in the response body and using it here again to make the respective assertion. Now, I'm not sure you if you have noticed that in the request body, we have here another thing and we have these square brackets. And if you don't know any JavaScript, you're probably wondering what exactly is that. And well, let's discover that on our own. So if you don't know exactly what kind of data structure that is, all we have to do and remember and let me show you another thing and probably you will get this error a lot. So if I do JSON data dot permissions, submit this. And now when you look at test results, you will see this reference error. JSON data is not defined and again, you're probably wondering, what do you mean it's not defined? I just defined it it's right here. Well, it's not. And this comes a bit to JavaScript. And this comes a bit to JavaScript basic, really. And you need to understand that every time you open these curly brackets, you know, in your side of function, any variables that you defined there have their own scope. And you can only use them here. So for that matter, if you want to do something like that, you need to put this outside the PM test if you want to reuse it multiple times. And I'll highly recommend you do that. Again, let me switch var with let because it's a bit more, it's a bit more in style with current JavaScript standards. So let's submit this again. And now we don't have any errors. So 
it's important to understand you can you can only use variables inside the scope you defined them now previously i said let's uh previously i mentioned type of so let's see what type of so let's see what type of does This is actually my bad. So it's JSON, JSON data dot JSON dot permissions. Okay. And now we have here an object, but it certainly looks a bit different than the objects that we previously had. And that is because this is actually an array. And an array can contain multiple elements and 2000, 3000, 4000 are actually the elements of that array. So if I was to just not use type of, you will see here it's an array and it contains these elements. Great. And how we can check that, for example, 4000 is here well let's see on how we can do that and the question of course is first how we can get to 4000 so as you can see this is the first element in the array this is a second and this is a third element in the array and the way you access elements in an array is by opening a square bracket and then putting in the number of the element as you can see it now again unfortunately hmm, let's try it out this will say null and this again can be very confusing but uh, going back to any IT skills you've learned in the past in IT we count in computer science we count from zero so this is actually zero this is one and this is two so it's not going to be three, it's going to be two. And once you put in the right one, you will see here 4,000. Now, let's write an assertion on that. And you can tell that I'm not really doing a lot of effort to give the test the proper name, but Generally, you should um, use test name for something like checking assertions that I have a semantical meaning to put them together. So every time you have multiple expectations and they make sense that they are grouped together, just group them in a test. But I'm just getting, uh, getting a bit quicker here on everything that's going on. So we said here that we have the permissions and we want to make sure that 4000 is included here and now we have a test that is passing great fortunately in the real world it happens a lot that this is not in the proper location sometimes maybe there comes another element in between and when the position of this element will change your assertion will fail as well and you're probably wondering why the heck it's still included but it doesn't have the right um, number in the array and you will need to change that and of course this doesn't make a lot of sense now another trick I wanted to tell you about is the underlying framework that Postman is actually using and this is the chai assertion library and this makes all this nice language possible that you see here that anybody can read and mm, i'll post you a link in the description below and i will be basically want to look for something that says to include so let's see if we find something with include and indeed you can use include and the syntax for to include is something like here. As you can see it right here as an example, you have an array one through three and you want to say to include two. 
So let's go back to our test and say here instead of equal, we want to make sure that it includes two. Now we're not gonna go to a specific element, but we are just take the entire array and make sure that it includes 4000. And now it will definitely not matter on which position 4000 is inside that array. Okay guys, thanks for watching this video and if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. You can continue with the next video by clicking right here. Come on, click. Right here. Don't keep me waiting.